Around the world and into your home, the stories that touch your life. With you Downs and Barbara Walters, this is 2020. Tonight, the story everyone's talking about. The greatest Olympic diver of all time. Perfect body, perfect form, Greg Luganis. Few suspected his inner struggle. I thought that the only thing that I had to offer was um, what I could do physically. And it, it didn't seem to be enough. Barbara Walters with the man and the story making headlines. As the world watched this unforgettable dive, Greg Luganis hid a terrible secret. You hit your head, and there may have been blood in the water. Why were you terrified? For the first time, he tells his story. The pain that haunted his childhood. The depression he couldn't control. So depressed that you tried suicide. And finally, a stunning revelation. He has AIDS. But you didn't tell the Olympic Committee. You no. didn't tell anyone. A Barbara Walters exclusive. Greg Luganis and the decision that created a controversy. The Secrets of a Champion. Once again, talking about Greg Luganis, the greatest diver the world has ever seen. An Olympic star whose perfection, experts say, will probably never be equaled. But people are not talking about his diving. They're talking about the stunning admission he made to Barbara about his health. At the age of 35, Greg Luganis is facing a new challenge and a painful controversy that has cast a shadow on the Olympic Games and raised questions, new questions, about future competitions. And Barbara, you know, watching your interview, I couldn't help wondering how you felt while you were talking to this man. Hugh, I can't remember when I have been more moved, this, this kind and dignified man. But I realize that this may be a shocking interview for millions of people who felt enormous pride watching Greg Luganis perform. But there's much more to his story and to the man than the devastating revelation that is now making headlines. Monday is publication day for his autobiography, Breaking the Surface. But tonight, for the first time, you'll find out who this sensitive and tortured champion really is. Greg Luganis is considered to be the greatest diver who ever lived. Top diving coaches say there will never be another one like him. He's won an incredible 47 national titles, five world championships, and five Olympic diving medals, winning consecutive double gold medals in 1984 and 1988, an unprecedented achievement. At the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, Korea, Luganis stole the hearts of the world when he hit his head he on the three-meter springboard yes. and then went on to win two gold medals. The world was at his feet, but what people didn't know was that Greg Luganis, four-time Olympic gold medalist, was one of the unhappiest men alive. For Luganis and his coach, Ron O'Brien, had kept a terrible secret. On my reverse two and a half pike, I, I knew as soon as I was coming off the board that I was gonna be close because I could feel it in my own body. So what I was concerned about is hitting my hands. So I came out wide so that the board would, you know, go by and I wouldn't hit it. You know, I started coming out of the dive and then I heard this big hollow thud and, um, and then I found myself in the water. I just held my head in hopes to, um, I didn't know if I was cut or not, but I just wanted to hold the blood in or, you know, just not anybody touch it. You hit your head mm -hmm. and there may have been blood in the water. Mm -hmm. Why were you terrified? Because Ron O'Brien and myself were one of the few people in the stands that that knew that I was HIV positive. You were in the 1988 Olympics 
HIV positive. Mm -hmm. Tonight is the first time Luganus has publicly admitted that he is HIV positive. He has written about this in his just published autobiography, Breaking the Surface. Luganus, now 35, is retired from diving and lives in the hills of Malibu with his five Great Danes. The story of Greg Luganus does not begin or end with the 88 Olympics, nor with the admission that he is HIV positive. The story of Greg Luganus was an epic almost from the day he was born. From a very early age, Luganus had trouble identifying just who he was. Born to a Samoan father and Northern European mother, both 15 at the time, Gregory Luganus was adopted at the age of nine months by Peter Luganus, a bookkeeper, and his wife, Frances. He was their second adopted child. They also had a daughter, Despina. Greg and his sister were raised in a middle-class suburb of San Diego. His incredible acrobatic talent became apparent before he was even two years old. From the beginning, all through his life, his mother was his greatest ally. My mother uh, got my sister enrolled in some dance classes. And I would get bored sitting in the waiting room, and so I'd start, you know, copying what they were doing. If they were dancing or doing some tumbling, then, you know, I'd mimic what they were doing. He seemed to love it. And then when Greg performed, you made his costumes? Every one of them. Sequins and all the, the whole nine yards. It was, it was a lot of it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a good growing experience, too. How did Greg begin to dive? We had purchased a home, and we put a pool in the back with just a regular diving board. And he was down there doing cartwheels off of the diving board. And I saw him, and I was afraid he had hurt himself. So I uh, asked my husband if I could give him lessons if he wanted them. And he said, sure. So I asked Greg, and he said yes. At the age of 12, Luganus won the Junior Olympics, his first major national title. But he had started competing in local meets when he was just nine. It was at that age that Ron O'Brien, later Luganus' Olympic coach, first saw him dive. He performed dives with an interpretation that was different than anybody else. And you could just see it when he was nine years old. He was far above anybody I ever saw at that age. In spite of Luganus's tremendous acrobatic talent and great diving potential, his childhood was not a happy time. There was a point in, in my early adolescence that, you know, I, I grew up knowing that I was adopted. Um, my skin was darker than the rest of the kids at, at my school. Um, it's called a lot of names. Like? Sissy, nigger, um, retard. I had a very difficult time with reading. Um, you were dyslexic. Yes, I'm But you didn't know it. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I didn't find out about dyslexia until I was a freshman in college. And it was like, oh my god, it's me. I'm not retarded. You know, I'm not, I'm not the moron that I thought I was. I'd see him come home from school. And I could almost tell you the way he felt and what he was going to do when he walked in the door. Was he a sad little boy? Mm -hmm. You must have felt terrible. I did. What was your husband like with Greg? Uh, he had nothing to do with Greg until Greg started winning first place. Then he stepped in. He never played with him. He never took him any place. He wasn't a role model for my son. 